Okay, this is a bit of a walkthrough of installing VirtualBox and then uh, importing a uh, what's termed a Windows appliance, which has got a, um, a Windows 32 um, machine in it, which is freely available from Microsoft for uh, download, so that uh, you can in, you can grab it. Links to everything is uh, is in the description here. So first we've grabbed VirtualBox. Um, I've left it as the defaults here, um, so it's going to uh, to install for me. So you know, uh, don't want a quick launch one. We want to register. I'm going to put a shortcut on the desktop. So I'll have that and yes. So install. So it shouldn't take too long. I'll uh, chat my way through. So what the uh, the intent of this video is to show you how to install, you know, very basic uh, VirtualBox setup. Um, which uh, is uh, from virtualbox.org website, so you can get this for uh, whichever oper operating system you want. Um, and then I've grabbed from uh, Microsoft provide a whole lot of images that um, allow you to test out different versions of either Windows 7 or XP or you know, other operating systems that um, have different variants of Internet Explorer in them. So if you're doing a bit of web development uh, and you want to try your website against a whole raft of um, different um, browsers, then these are ideal things to use. But um, they also give you a really good 32-bit Windows 7 install that you can test and trial software in, in a nice safe environment that's not your normal computer. So yeah, VirtualBox is uh, installing a few drivers and uh, various bits and pieces and uh, it's pretty much done so yeah we will uh, start VirtualBox after the installation so welcome to VirtualBox so what I'm going to do here is I've actually downloaded from a link that's provided an appliance so I'm going to import the appliance so I'm going to go looking for it so I've, um, I've done a few things here uh, on my hard drive so this PC I want C drive now I've um, set up a whole bunch of things inside a, uh, a VirtualBox folder here. So I've got my virtual hard drives and images here. So here's an Internet Explorer Windows 7 image. So I'm just going to import this. Um, so name, IE Win 7, I'm going to give it one CPU. I'm going to give it a bit more memory than this. Um, we're going to give it uh, 1024. Be aware that when you're giving uh, things memory, um, be aware of how much memory you've got on your own computer. Um, I'm going to give it a network adapter. Uh, all the, just going to leave these all as pretty much standard, um, and just give it a bit more memory than uh, than expected. And I'm going to import that. So I've allowed it to have uh, one CPU and a gig of memory. So that should be enough to run most Windows 7 things. So this is going to um, go along and import it. I might pause this for a moment until uh, until the imports happen and we get to something interesting. Okay, we're nearly there. So um, it uh, is just installed and it's come back. So here we have a machine. So there's a whole raft of uh, settings that you can fiddle around with uh, for the machine. Um, it will give you a whole lot of uh, you know, basic and advanced settings for everything. This tells us where the um, snapshots are being held. You know, this tells us all about the system, what it's got, and how, many, how much memory. So you can adjust all of these um, you know, between starts and stops. Um, you know, video memory, you can adjust, you know, add audio. You know. So NAT is the default. So And uh, this means that your computer um, your virtual computer that's sitting on your machine is using your IP address and your card to talk to it. You can set it up so that it gets its own IP address, but in most environments, NAT's a good place to start. If it works like that, then uh, don't adjust it. So, shared folders. Um, I'm going to add a shared folder so I can get information in and out of this. This is something that uh, I pretty much always do. So, I'm going to put a folder path here, uh, and we're going to have other, so I'm going to put it on this PC, and one I prepared earlier was down here at uh, VirtualBox and Virtual Shared Files. So I want this folder because I've got some software in there that I'm going to uh, to have, and I'm going to call it, go with that default one, and we're going to auto mount it. That means whenever the virtual machine fires up, it uh, mounts up this directory so that you can 
you know, copy information in and out of your virtual machine easily. So yes, and we're going to say OK and save that. Now I'm going to start this up and we'll just see what happens. So this is you know, starting up the virtual Windows 7 32-bit computer inside my Windows 8.1 laptop. So here it is starting Windows. So this is a free image that was downloaded from the Microsoft website. It's not small. Um, before you sort of embark on this, make sure you've got plenty of download available. Um, VirtualBox itself is not very large, but the uh, the Windows image is uh, about three gig in size. So you'll um, you'll see that um, you know, it's telling us a lot of stuff as it fires up. So that it's saying that it automatically catches the pointer and the keyboard, so you don't have to um, use the uh, right control key to get your cursor in and out. Um, the other thing once we start is uh, I always install the VirtualBox uh, additions, which uh, aid, aid in, uh, you know, gives you a shared clipboard and allows you to copy and paste. So Windows has just fired up. You may or may not have heard that. Um, so in here we have uh, I'm going to say this is a public network and that's OK. So that's fine, it's found a network card which is good. So I'm going to insert the guest editions and uh, install those. So that should give us, so this is a fully working copy of Windows 7 that's uh, operating inside. So here's our CD drive editions that I just inserted and I'm going to uh, to install all the stuff off uh, off this which gives us extensions to the uh, to the way it works and makes life nice and simple. You'll see that uh, up here there's also options for turning your uh, shared clipboard on and off, you drag and drop, so I'm going to make that uh, bi-directional. Uh, yes, I'm going to run the VirtualBox editions please. So here we go, yes Yes, please do that. The other thing that I'm going to do up here is turn on drag and drop. I usually turn this on so you can uh, hopefully drag and drop things between the two uh, the two computers, the uh, the host and the uh, and the client. So they're all uh, those are all turned on. Often you'll need to uh, restart the um, the virtual machine to get those to work. So there we have. We just tick through. We install all the um, the, the additions to make life nice and easy for us. Uh, yes please I would. So now what this gives us is a clean install. So there's all sorts of options on um, on VirtualBox of taking snapshots so that you can back up really easily to a known good clean empty state. So we'll just reboot this and it, it'll come back up. So very very quick restart because it's all in software. So here it comes. So you'll notice that uh, once we get a, uh, a Windows Explorer back up, there uh, we'll have a look at that we shared folder. Now I put a little bit of um, uh, trial software from uh, for PLC programming in there. So uh, it's called Isograph, um, and it's something I'm using in uh, in some of my work that I'm doing at the moment. So once it comes up we'll, uh, we'll do an install of Isograph into this Windows 7 computer from the, uh, the shared directory. So here it is. Now if I open up Windows Explorer we have our computer. So we have our shared files. So here's the Isograph uh, directory. As in, Here's one I prepared earlier. So here's, uh, we'll just look for the setup file so here's the setup file. So this is running off the um, the shared file. So this is just sitting in my normal file system, but it's being accessed through the through the um, the share to the virtual machine. So this is just installing as you would install any normal software into a uh, a computer. So we'll have all of it, please. So again, this is just sitting running inside inside uh, you know, my Windows 64-bit. Eight, uh, Windows 8.1 64-bit laptop. It's got a, an i7 on board, so you know it's got a few. It's got a, a couple of processors. So, but you can see Windows 7's working perfectly well with one gig of memory and one CPU. 
so you know it gives me a really good test environment um, so this is a really good way to test software um, and again if you're building a website and you wanted to test with uh, Internet Explorer 11 which is in this um, Windows 7 um, build then here's yeah Internet Explorer 11 now you could have another virtual machine that you fire up when you wanted to test against you know IE 8 or any of the other images that uh, Microsoft had provided for us so doing doing it uh, in a virtual machine like this gives you a really good way to um, to test out a whole lot of things uh, I regularly play with uh, Linux uh, builds inside a virtual environment like this to uh, allow me to keep touch with um, that operating system as well so I might uh, just pause it here for a moment and uh, come back when we uh, we have it installed and we can see it running so we've got to isograph install so pick English and uh, isograph is uh, is now doing it uh, doing its install thing so all it did was uh, install .NET 4 in the meantime because uh, isograph needs that so we just uh, cranking up uh, now and uh, installing the the isograph software itself so I'll just check that nothing's uh, stopping it from going yep it's just uh, initializing and, uh, and getting itself together so uh, I'm going to pause it again until we uh, we get to a next uh, point of interest so we're close to the end of the install here um, and it's just working down to the end it's uh, had to work through a whole bunch of uh, Microsoft stuff the actual uh, install for this is uh, it's about a two gigabyte file so yeah it's, uh, it's taken a little while to uh, push it in and uh, and get it all sorted out so you know you uh, luckily haven't had to sit through all of that um, so it's getting very close to uh, to ending now I think which is why I dropped the uh, the microphone back on and we picked it back up so it's just configuring up the software so what we've got now is basically a computer running in software in a window on our desktop that we can use as a sandbox to test software um, you know, there's a whole heap of um, virtual machines out there configured that uh, are available for uh, for VirtualBox and um, yeah it's a um, a, a good way that uh, you can use um, you can test uh, test out trial software without uh, messing around with your main operating system on your computer so it uh, it's it's a very very useful tool to um, to keep uh, keep the nasties away from your main machine and uh, and also in the case of some of the older software out there it's the uh, it's an ability to actually run something on Windows 7 32-bit natively that won't run on some of the newer operating systems you know stuff that doesn't like 64-bit you can run in here quite happily um, again VirtualBox is perfectly capable of running a 64-bit uh, a operating system you know, inside a virtual environment like this so yeah real chance to to have a have a play around with uh, all sorts of options here so I might just uh, pause it again until such time as uh, we get the uh, the final install happening and we have it up and running righto we're back it's uh, finished installing so here we are it's, uh, hopefully we uh, we get a run out of it So it's finished, we have Isograph. So here we are, Isograph 6.1 PLC coding software installed and functional inside the window on the desktop. So the other nice thing about uh, installing the later versions of this is if we make it full screen, it will uh, automatically resize and give us lots and lots of disk space. So it's pretty flexible in how it works. So yeah, loading user settings may take a few minutes. Well, we'll see. Here we are, introducing Isograph, and then away we go into Isograph. New project, and we're all sorted out. So here we are. Easy. Right, hope that's been useful. Um, thanks very much for watching. Catch you all later.